actually pick it up from last night when after hours of anticipation, Sam Bankman Freed finally boarded a Gulfstream jet and left the Bahamas for New York in the custody of U.S. federal agents. Yet somehow, by the time Bankman Freed touched down, the story had taken another turn. U.S. prosecutors unveiled charges against Bankman Freed's top lieutenants, FTX co-founder Gary Wang and former Alameda chief Caroline Ellison, who is Bankman Freed's ex-love interest as well. The SEC and the CFTC also unsealed complaints against Wang and Ellison, who have been cooperating with government probes and had pleaded guilty to criminal charges in sealed filings from days prior. This morning, though, all eyes were on the Manhattan Federal Courthouse at 500 Pearl Street, where Bankman Freed was expected to appear. The hearing began at around 1 p.m. local time, and it became readily apparent that Bankman Freed's legal team had indeed cut a deal with the feds. The former FTX CEO was subject to a $250 million bail with electronic monitoring and restrictions on mobility. But that number is less impressive when you consider the fact that Bankman Freed's parents merely had to guarantee his behavior and put up the equity in their Palo Alto home. It's a surprisingly small sum for a man who federal prosecutors allege perpetrated a, quote, years-long brazen fraud against his investors and customers, bilking them out of $8 billion. But then again, Bankman Freed claims he's down to his last $100,000. For context, Bonds, uh, Ponzi schemer Bernie Madoff was subject to a $10 million bail secured by his mansions across the country. Enron CEO Jeff Skilling had to post a $5 million bail. And recently imprisoned Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes had to fork over $500,000. Bankman Fried will be back in court in the new year where he'll be arraigned in federal court and enter his plea of guilty or not guilty. Tamar? Yeah, remember the days, Mackenzie, when we thought Enron was a massive fraud. Uh, it's looking a bit, <laughs> looking a bit different now. Uh, but look, as you mentioned, uh, Wang and Ellison, his top deputies, turning on him. They're part of that whole federal indictment. Uh, what about the others? What about some of his other people in, in the team? Yeah, so you have three other major players in the FTX Alameda empire. They're Sam Tribuco, Ryan Salem, and Nishad Singh, who were made conspicuous by their absence in the filings released on Wednesday night. Salem snitched on SBF Wang and Singh to Bahamian regulators two days before FTX filed for bankruptcy. Meanwhile, Sam Tribuco had been co-leading Alameda, and he just resigned in August. And then FTX co-founder Nishad Singh, also not named in last night's paperwork, unclear whether any back-channeling happening now with those three. As for whether we see more federal indictments, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York has encouraged anyone who took part in misconduct at FTX or Alameda to voluntarily come forward, saying now is the time to get ahead of it. Back to you. All right, Mackenzie, thanks so much indeed for that. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.